case like this notebooks you gonna uh, start baru when you tukar kelas nanti All right. Oh, Allah. Sekejap, sekejap, sekejap. Hilang eh. Sabar je lah tu. Okay. Nampak eh? Okay, semua. All right. So, now is your chapter five. So, macam biasa in my class, I love to recall previous uh, sorry, by the way, you guys dengar tak? Sebab now I buka slides besar so I don't see your the screen anymore. Dengar. Okay. Dengar, Dengar eh? So kalau, uh, since I don't see, I might not read message. So kalau you tak faham, you just buka you punya microphone and tanya. Kalau you terlepas, just like text me. Alright, so macam biasa, I recall to do first. Chapter 1, Introduction to Biology and Literature. This is very basic. Uh, this one, we didn't cover in the class but I'm try, I'm going to cari a quiz that you boleh buat later for you. Just, just have a look, alright? Chapter 2, Cell Biology and Organization. Kat sini lah you belajar unicellular, multicellular dan macam mana daripada cell, pas part organ, pada system, blah 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 kat sini, alright? And 2, you belajar amoeba and paramecium, right? Untuk unicellular. So you need to know macam mana they uh, hidup. Okay, all the details pasal amoeba and paramecium. Next, you belajar movement of substances across plasma membrane. Alright, bila kita cakap pasal plasma membrane, you kena tahu structure dia. Alright, bila sebut pasal structure, ingat model apa? Fluid, mosaic, model. Then you akan belajar uh, dia punya uh, control dia. So, siapa yang boleh masuk, siapa yang tak boleh masuk. So, ingat lagi analogi pasal party tu. Alright, birthday party. Siapa yang boleh masuk, siapa yang tak boleh masuk. Bila you belajar, then you akan belajar application. Ada tiga jenis. Hypotonic, hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic. Okay, when we talk about this, isotonic. When we talk about all these three solutions, you have to be familiar with solute potential and water potential. Alright, because the term solute potential dengan water potential, you akan jumpa sampai hujung nanti. Especially when you masuk form 5 that you nak belajar a regulation of opening of stomata. Alright, so make sure chapter 3 ni sangat suka ditanya dalam soalan structure dan AC. Chapter 4, Chemical Composition in a Cell. Alright. So this one yang you baru belajar. When we talk about chemical composition in a cell, okay, you belajar pasal monomer yang buat polymer. Okay, you belajar organic dengan inorganic. Yang inorganic, you belajar water saja. Yang organic, you belajar tiga. Tiga, sorry. Carbohydrate. Okay, protein, nucleic acid, dengan lipid. Oh, lipid. So, karbohidrat, monomer dia monosaccharide, protein, monomer amino acid, nucleic acid, monomer dia nucleotide. Nucleotide. So, bila kita cakap pasal nucleotide, ingat macam nak lukis dia. Alright, pentose sugar, phosphate group dengan nitrogenous base. Alright, this is very simple. Kalau si, kalau I cakap ni, you masih lupa lagi nucleotide macam mana structure, apa tu polymer, apa tu tu. Uh, so, record balik. Alright, just have a look yang video yang I dah submit tu, just watch 10 minutes balik sebab you couldn't afford untuk loss. Chapter 5 now, dalam kelas kita, kita akan belajar metabolism and enzymes. Right? Then baru you akan belajar pasal all this application. This one is basic dulu. Sampai chapter 7, basic. You belajar pasal basic. Then baru you akan belajar detail sikit. Chapter 8 sampai chapter 15. So, this one recall balik previous chapter. You belajar chemical composition in a cell yang I cakap tadi lah. So, this one inorganic. This one organic. Why? 
dalam chapter ni, dalam chapter chemical composition in Excel, dalam kelas sebelum ni, I ajar you macam mana nucleic acid, alright? DNA, nucleic acid ada dua kan? DNA dengan RNA. So you should know apa different. Yeah, sorry. RNA. All the difference you dah tulis dalam quiz you. Double stranded, single stranded, ada ribose, ada deoxyribose, blah blah blah. And how this nucleic acid, DNA, kita transcribe jadi RNA dan kita translate jadi protein. Alright, kita translate. Dan proses ni, I explain details dah in your previous class. Why I want you untuk faham this one, alright, from this one, sebab of the next chapter. Metabolism and enzyme. Kebanyakan enzyme, alright, tak semua, alright, kebanyakan enzyme adalah datang daripada protein. Ada juga enzyme datang daripada RNA tapi tak banyak. So, kebanyakan enzyme adalah protein. So, lepas kita dapat polypeptide layer ni tadi, polypeptide chain. Okay, ini adalah lepas dia translate, dapat polypeptide chain. So, this polypeptide chain, dia akan, okay, dia akan fold diri dia. So, mungkin, mungkin banyak bentuk lah macam ni, macam tu, okay. Untuk dijadikan enzyme. Production dia sama je daripada transcription, translation, lepas dia translate semua ni, ini datang daripada rough endoplasmic reticulum, pergi kat Golgi apparatus, kita fold dia jadi macam ni dan dia jadilah enzyme. So, okay, we will have a look later. So, in this chapter, first you akan belajar the naming of enzyme, the characteristic of enzyme, mechanism of enzyme, factors affecting enzyme and application. So today I'm going to finish everything in one hour. Okay, so I'm going to, going to be fast. Kalau lah you tertinggal three, uh, just uh, revisit the chapters later. First kali, sebelum kita belajar pasal enzyme, you need to know pasal metabolism. So, orang selalu cakap macam, oh dia tu kurus sebab metabolisme tinggi. Alright, salah. The term is wrong. Because metabolism involve dua benda. Anabolism. Anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism adalah dia cipta benda tu, alright. Dia buat. Contoh dia macam badan you daripada, badan you ada glukos kan? So, glukos ni anabolism bila glukos tambah glukos kita tukar jadi maltose. Lepas tu you tambah lagi glukos, glukos panjang-panjang-panjang kita tukar jadi simpanan dalam badan kita jadi glycogen. Alright? Itu adalah anabolism. We create this daripada monomer, glukos. Glukosakarat ni kan, glukomonosakarat ni kita bina dia jadi polisakarat, itu adalah anabolism. Katabolism, kita hancurkan dia. Alright, daripada glycogen, kita katabolisekan dia, kita hancurkan dia. Alright, through hydrolysis process, jadi glukos, glukos, glukos. Alright, so ini katabolism. Why you learn about metabolism? Sebab, okay, dalam badan you, in order untuk ni happen, let's say you ada glukos. Okay, ni glukos. Ini glukos. Okay, the bond kat sini, kan, nama dia glycosidic bond. In previous class kita dah belajar. Right? So, I hope ada ni dalam notebook you. The bond between these two glucose molecule, nama dia glycosidic bond. And this bond is very strong. Okay. Jadi, untuk badan you undergoes metabolism, sama ada untuk kita buat this bond through anabolism, or if we want to break this bond through catabolism, we need a very high energy. All right? Keras dia ni. Macam ikatan dia tu sangat keras. Jadi, 
selalunya untuk buat this bond ni, alright, atau untuk break this bond ni, kita akan minta tolong enzyme. Okay, sebab enzyme dia akan lower the energy needed. Okay, what do I mean by this? Nanti we will have a look later. Alright, ini je. I nak you faham first kenapa you belajar metabolism and apa role of enzyme in your metabolism. Right eh? So, anabolism, it need energy. Alright, untuk create ni macam ni lah berpeluh-peluh dia ni Dora, Dora pula. Diego kan, Dora, uh, Diego adalah Dora punya cousin. <laughs> okay, anabolism, they need energy untuk buat something. So, macam glukos dengan glukos tadi untuk combine kan dia, kita perlukan energy. So, energy come in a form of ATP. Kalau catabolism, it release energy. Alright? Sama lah macam uh, apa nama dia uh, you nak oxidize glucose. Alright? Dia akan keluarkan ATP. Release energy. So, enzyme yang kita akan belajar sini mostly made up of proteins dan dia cakap dia adalah catalyst. So, apa maksud catalyst? Catalyst ni adalah bahasa Melayu dia we call it pemangkin. Alright, macam something that make happen benda tu quick. Contoh dia macam uh, you malas nak submit uh, test. Okay, macam oh malanya malas lah malas lah buat lagi. You cakap you akan hantar pukul 10 malam ni. I cakap deadline pukul 10 malam ni baru nak hantar. Tapi tiba-tiba I whatsapp, I kata Hadi Fahmin, bila nak hantar? Ah, so, text I tu act as catalyst. Pemangkin, you terus buat dan hantar. Okay, itu adalah catalyst. Selepas so, ni kita akan tengok apa substrate, apa exercise, apa enzyme substrate complex. Ni je dulu. I want you to faham. Enzyme adalah catalyst. Selalunya, mostly made up of proteins. Tapi tak semua. Alright? Two enzyme. Okay, first dalam this chapter you belajar metabolism. Now you know what is enzyme. We will have a look on the naming of enzyme. Macam mana kita nak namakan enzyme. Okay, so kalau have you heard of enzyme before? Pernah kan uh, waktu science? I rasa lah, class science. So it won't, uh, it shouldn't be something new to you when we talk about enzyme. Alright, so remember sebelum ni enzyme Okay, enzyme akan sentiasa dinamakan, will always be named after its substrate. Okay, enzyme will always be named after its substrate. So, this is coming from our previous lecture, chemical composition in a cell. So, glucose tambah glucose akan jadi maltose. Alright, glucose tambah fructose jadi sucrose. Glucose plus galactose jadi lactose. Semua ni adalah disaccharides. So, enzyme selalu digunakan untuk hancurkan this bond between them. Alright. Tapi, enzyme kena kira. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Alright. So, enzyme kena, uh, apa nama dia, uh, enzyme is very specific. So, kalau enzyme yang digunakan untuk hancurkan maltose, jadi glukos, alright, nama enzyme ni maltase. Ditambah hujung ni ASE. Enzyme yang nak guna untuk hancurkan sucrose, nama dia sucrase. Okay. Enzyme nak hancurkan lactose, nama dia? Cuba teka. Lactase. Lactase. Yes. Lactase. So, kalau I cakap enzyme yang digunakan untuk dia nama amylase, you rasa substrate dia adalah apa? Amylase. Um, bijak tekan itu tapi tidak dia adalah amylose. Alright. Amylose ni you jumpa dekat starch. So 
enzim amylase diguna untuk hancurkan starch. Alright, sebab dekat starch ada amylopectin. It's okay. Ini uh, level you akan belajar this one dalam uh, chapter nutrition nanti. Okay, lambat lagi. Alright, enzim apa lagi? Uh, peptidase. Enzyme peptidase. Dia punya substrate adalah peptidose. peptidose. Boleh jadi it's dipeptide actually. Dipeptide. Kita nak hancurkan peptide ni. Peptidase jadi amino acid. But you get the point. Alright. Naming after it substrate. Tapi kalau you belajar nutrition nanti you akan jumpa enzim nama dia trypsin renin a uh, pepsin okey you akan jumpa enzim nama pepsin renin trypsin pasti macam otokay oh, otokay sepatutnya enzim nama dia macam ase se hujung ha, kenapa yang ni nanti nak, dia adalah enzim tapi nama dia tak ada ase kat hujung Sebab enzim ni orang ni jumpa sebelum kita namakan dia ASE. So dia yang jumpa macam, oh, I nak namakan enzim ni trypsin. Lepas tu kawan dia jumpa Rani, I nak namakan enzim ni Rani. Lepas tu dia cakap, eh ini ada tiga dia sebenarnya ada berjuta-juta dalam badan you. Takkan nak boleh tak nama macam ni. Macam mana budak form 4 extrovert nak belajar nanti? Ha, macam tu. So dia kata after kita jumpa banyak enzim ni sebab itulah uh, kita start the nomenclature. Alright, the naming process. Tapi this one were named before the naming process. Right, but you get the point. So, naming of the enzyme. Second, kita akan belajar characteristic. I love talking about these characteristics. Alright, so this one you akan tengok. Dekat buku teks, oh macam nak muntah tengok. Ah. General characteristic of enzyme. First, they add rapidly. Needed in small quantities and reusable. Tiga, structure remain unchanged. Empat, reaction very specific. Lima, reaction reversible. Enam, will be stopped by presence of inhibitors. Tujuh, dia perlu cofactors. Ni adalah dia punya uh, apa nama uh, characteristic. It speed up biochemical reaction. So, soalan suka tanya you. Kalau soalan essay explain the characteristic of enzymes ataupun dia bagi satu uh, action enzyme tu dia kata which characteristic of enzyme yang depict this picture. Okay so cara senang nak ingat alright this one is very mouthful kan macam oh panjangnya alright cara, cara senang nak ingat adalah you ingat enzyme as your crush alright crush orang yang you suka. Uh, siapa paling glamour kelas you? Kak bagi satu nama. Come on. Arman. 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 Sini. Betul ni? Betul. Alright. So Arman. Okay. Let's say uh, nama Aina atas kali ni Aimi Adelina. Alright. Aimi Adelina suka Arman. Okay. Sebab Arman ni adalah crush Aimi Adelina. Dia suka Arman. Lepas orang tanya macam kenapa suka Arman? Contoh kan. Uh, ni crush I. Nama dia Callum Scott. Okay. Kalau you tahu dia tengok lagu. You are the reason. Alright. I love this guy. So. So let's say lah. Nama dia Enzyme Calamase. Alright, this is your crush. Okay, ni bayangkan ni Arman. Okay. Why? First sekali, why do you like your crush? Kenapa I suka Callum? Ataupun kenapa I ni suka Arman? Sebab dia satu-satu je. Alright, you tak boleh. You tak boleh macam uh, suka Arman, suka Adif, Hadif Amin, suka Sheikh Yusof. Tak boleh. You memang sejenis crush ni seorang je. Tak, kita tak boleh crush ramai-ramai. Sama juga macam enzyme, kita perlukan in small quantity. Alright, seorang je. One and only. So, karakteristik yang pertama, needed, required in small quantities. Alright? Okay. Reusable. Maksud dia, boleh je you crush dia tak form one, lepas tu macam, oh, dia tak dia tak crush dah. Lepas tu form four nampak dia handsome balik. Ha, you crush balik. Alright? 
So first characteristic, okay, macam Arman tadi hanya ada Arman sahaja dekat Exobin, seorang sahaja. Jadi itulah crush you. Characteristic pertama required in small quantities. Second, kenapa you suka Arman? Okay, kalau macam I, I suka Callum because of his eyes, alright? He has this green eyes, sparkling green eyes yang macam oh handsome yang macam tu. So Arman mungkin dia punya rambut pacak-pacak. Okay, sebab tu I mean Adelina suka Arman. So, green eyes. So this green eyes, sebab tu orang cakap macam you like him for a very specific reason. Sama macam, atau you like her for a very specific reason. Sama macam enzyme, it acts very specific. Alright. Kenapa it very specific? Sebab dia ada active site. So, what is active site? Kita akan belajar later. Right, kan? Yang pertama, characteristic of enzyme, small quantity. Okay, macam crush, seorang je. Nombor dua, very specific. Right, kalau mata. Okay, pandang Arman, ingat. Seorang Arman, lepas tu tengok mata Arman. Right, very specific. Nombor tiga, orang cakap macam, why? Kenapa kita nak kena ada? Bukanlah kenapa nak kena ada. So, macam bila... Uh, Aimi tengah belajar, okay, tengah belajar nampak je Arman masuk prep kerja Aimi yang tak siap tadi terus, oh dia laju siap. Alright, sebab dia macam oh bersemangat tengok uh, Arman. Jadi sama juga macam enzyme, okay, enzyme dia akan speed up biochemical reaction. Sama macam mana crush you, oh buat you terus bersemangat buat kerja. Right, the third characteristic of enzyme adalah speed up biochemical reaction. First, I Arman for you ada seorang saja. Nombor dua very specific. Nombor tiga dia bila masuk je prep, uh, so terus macam you laju bersemangat nak buat kerja. Sama juga macam your crush. Alright, so enzyme speed up biochemical reaction. Nombor empat. Okay, nombor empat. Selalunya, okay, let's say Arman lalu dekat uh, dekat pintu, pintu pula dah, dekat, uh, dekat kelas you, alright. Uh, ni Aimi Adina tengah belajar kat sini. Lepas tu Aimi Adina dia lag je, nampak Arman ni selalu kawan-kawan dia yang macam, oh piwit-piwit Arman lalu lah. Sebab semua tahu uh, Arman ni adalah crush Aimi. Alright, so pembantu, pembantu crush ni, alright, your friends ni kita panggil as co-factors. Right? Co-factor. Like how my friend, uh, ni co-factor I lah ni semua ni. Because I love Callum is my crush, so they are like my co-factors. Dia yang carikan the concert. Sama juga macam you. Eh sama juga macam the crush. Okay? Kawan-kawan you adalah co-factors. Alright. Lastly, okay, this and not lastly, alright? Second last. Okay, first ingat, it's Seorang je crush. Jadi needed in small quantities. You like your crush for very specific reason. Sama juga macam enzyme, very specific. Nombor tiga, the presence of your enzyme akan buat you belajar lagi cepat. Sama juga macam enzyme, speed up biochemical reaction. Nombor four, action of enzyme will be helped by cofactors. Sama juga macam crush you kawan-kawan. Alright? Okay. Number five, the action of enzyme adalah reversible. Alright, maksudnya macam Arman tadi, kalau satu hari Arman datang macam, oh hi Aimee, so hati dia berbunga-bunga. Alright, esok ini buat bodoh je dekat Aimee. Jadi hati Aimee hancur balik. So, hati dia reversible. Okay, sama macam Caleb. Dulu dia setiap tahun dia wish birthday I. Jadi hati I berbunga-bunga balik. Sampailah dia beritahu yang dia gay. Jadi hati I hancur. Tak, dah, dah tak reversible. <laughs> Alright. So, this characteristic adalah sama juga macam enzyme, the reaction is reversible. Okay. Kalau nak cakap betul, cakap, uh, betulnya, so macam glukos, glukos, enzyme hancurkan jadi maltose. Alright. Enzyme juga boleh buat dia balik. Jadi glukos, glukos. Reversible. So, kita buat dia punya anak panah tu macam ni. Okay. Last kali, samalah juga macam you punya crush. Sometimes uh, you suka sangat Arman ni. 
Tapi rupanya Arman dah ada girlfriend. So hati Aimi pun hancur. So this girlfriend kita panggil as inhibitor. Ha. So macam Callum. Okay, Callum dia tak straight. So ni lelaki sebenarnya. Alright. So this the presence of this boyfriend or girlfriend adalah kita panggil inhibitor. So inhibitor akan stop the action. Okay, sama lagi nak macam hati you, you dah tak crash lah dia sebab hmm, buat apa dia dah ada girlfriend. So, this girlfriend akan inhibit the process. Sama juga macam enzyme, the action of enzyme will be stopped by inhibitor. Alright, last kali, last kali, alright, first, you ingat eh, one and only. Dua, action of enzyme very specific. Tiga, dia cakap high kat you, speed up biochemical reaction. Empat, kawan-kawan tolong macam piwit-piwit kan? Alright, itu adalah cofactors. Lima, will be stop or slow down by the presence of inhibitor. Akhir sekali, tak kisahlah you suka ke tak dia ke apa. Uh, Mereka you suka sangat pun you punya crush. Tapi dia uh, tak bother pun. Dia tak make effort, so tak make effort bla bla bla. So it will remain unchanged at the end of reaction. Macam ni lah crush you. Alright, you suka dia pun tak ada, dia sakit ke, you you marah dia pun tak ada, I mean like you benci dia pun dia tak affected, alright sebab so, dia crush je. So your crush sama juga macam enzyme, yang paling penting adalah it's remain unchanged at the end of reaction. So kalau you hancurkan glucose tadi jadi maltose, alright, enzyme ni hancurkan, enzyme ni dia stay je macam dia, so dia takkan ter, terosak. Faham tak? So it's unchanged. So to remember again the characteristic, okay, right? We need again first small quantities, second very specific, tiga speed up biochemical reaction, empat will be helped by the presence of cofactors, lima will be it is reversible, enam stop by presence of inhibitor, akhir sekali remain unchanged at the end of reaction. Sorry, uh, ada orang ni ke? Okay, sekejap. Okay. Sekejap, I, I nampak, I dengar macam ada orang message ni, so I buka here. Okay. Hilang ke tadi? Tadi dia cakap seorang ke? Tak. Tak ni. Oh, baru lagi lah ni. Okay. Biarlah saya buka sini lah. Senang sikit nampak. Okay. So, again, I want you untuk recall. Okay, now recall balik. Now you tak nampak. Okay, recall balik. Cepat. So enzyme, apa karakteristik of enzyme? So ingat Arman ni tadi. So setiap kali cakap karakteristik of enzyme, so you ingat uh, you punya crush. So first kali, one apa? And only. Yeah. The one, one only. One and only tu needed in small so, quantity. quantity. Second. Specific. Specific. Yes, mata dia. Nombor dua, very specific. Okay. Tiga. Speed up biochemical reaction. Yes. Yeah, speed up. You nampak dia terus nak belajar. Speed up biochemical reaction. Nombor empat. Co-factor. Ya kawan-kawan dia. So will be. Uh, you jangan tulis co-factor je macam ni tau. So ini adalah cara nak ingat. Tapi ingatlah dia punya ayat dia tu. Alright. Will be help. Some enzyme will be helped by presence of co-factors. Nombor lima, jantung you. Reversible. 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 Nombor enam, dia dah ada girlfriend. Inhibitor. Inhibitor. Uh, will be stopped or slow down by presence of inhibitor. inhibitor. Akhir sekali. Remain unchanged. unchanged. Remain unchanged. Right? Senang? You nak ingat? Very easy, right? So... Bila you recall balik ni, general characteristic of enzyme, small quantity. Structure remain unchanged. Very specific. 
reversible. Alright, activity slowed down by presence of inhibitors. Need cofactors to work more efficiently. Speed up biochemical reaction. Now, all these general characteristics of enzyme, you dah ingat by heart. Boleh ni? Is that easier for you? Yes. Yes, right? Okay, so next you akan belajar. So, this one is very simple lah. You dah belajar sebenarnya intracellular and extracellular enzyme. So, enzyme yang digunakan dalam sel, alright, yang digunakan dalam sel, Contoh dia enzim yang diperlukan, uh, mitochondria you perlu enzim ni. Jadi kita akan simpan dalam sel sahaja. Itu adalah intracellular enzyme. Okay, contoh dia hexokinase. Right, enzim ni you perlu dalam sel. Jadi you takkan bawa keluar. Extracellular enzim adalah enzim yang diperlukan di luar sel. Contoh dia adalah enzim yang perlukan uh, macam dekat mulut you dekat ileo you ada enzim nama dia amylase. Alright. So bila you makan uh, nasi, nasi kan bentuk starch kan? So enzim ni akan break kan di starch. Jadi maltose. Alright sebab tu lagi lama you kunyah nasi, starch tak manis. Right? Tak ada rasa manis. Maltose manis. Sebab tu makin lama you kunyah nasi makin sweet. Dia sebab dia dah jadi maltose. Sebab tu kita kena kunyah 40 kali. Ha, sebab nak pastikan semua ni tukar jadi maltose. So, kat ileo you, alright. Okay, ni ileo you. Ha, dalam ileo you ada amylase. So, yang buat amylase ni adalah sel-sel salivary gland kat sini. So, amylase digunakan di luar sel. So, dia adalah extracellular enzyme. Dalam ni, you akan belajar production dia. Okay. This production, I tak risau sangat dah nak ajar because I already ajar you semalam. Okay. Cuma macam semalam, you belajar pasal daripada DNA kat sini. Alright. Tukar jadi mRNA. Okay. Tukar jadi mRNA. Lepas tu, this mRNA, alamak, I nak ni macam Okay, this mRNA akan pergi kat ribosom, like how you belajar yesterday. Alright, belajar kat ribosom, pergi kat ribosom. Then, ribosom akan translate. Okay, ribosom akan translate. Sampailah you dapat this polypeptide chain. Right, polypeptide chain macam ni. This polypeptide chain ni, okay, adalah protein. Okay, polypeptides. Polypeptides masuk dalam transport vesikel. Waktu tu dia masih lagi protein. Dia tak ada apa-apa lagi. Dia just polypeptide chain. Dia tak tahu lagi kat mana dia punya destinasi. Right? Masuk dalam transport vesikel. Okay, pergi dekat Golgi apparatus. Waktu dekat Golgi apparatus lah, chain ni tadi, chain biasa yang kita akan fold dia. Right? Mungkin kita um, uh, fold dia macam ni. Fold dia, kita modify dia. Ataupun kita tambah apa-apa yang perlu. Right? So, sebab tu Golgi apparatus kita transport kita modify dia. Alright? Inilah process of modification of this polypeptide chain. Modify dan akhir sekali kita package. Package dalam secretory vesicle. Okay. Ingat, first adalah transport vesicle. Second adalah secretory vesicle. So, baru kita bawa benda ni keluar. Kalau dia adalah extracellular enzyme. Kalau intracellular, kita payah guna je dalam ni. Alright. So, soalan boleh tanya you. Apa beza transport vesikel dengan secretory vesikel? Okay. Yang paling penting sekali, you cakap transport vesikel dalam ni adalah unmodified protein. Unmodified protein. Whereas dalam secretory vesikel, it is modified. 
content. Okay, sebab ni baru nak bawa pergi Google Apparatus. Ni after Google Apparatus. So, transport vesicle datang daripada draft endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi apparatus. Secretory from Golgi apparatus. Alright. So, ini adalah production. This one, okay. I love untuk cerita kat you because this is the basis of the vaccine. Alright. Ingat tak the vaccine adalah Pfizer, coming from Pfizer adalah mRNA vaccine. So mRNA adalah this one. So this vaccine, this mRNA contains information pasal virus. So selalunya ambil spike protein ni je. Okay, hujung ni. So bila kita dah buat, so bila dia keluarkan sini, extra, bila kita hasilkan this protein, Bila kita dah modify, you akan buat banyak spike protein of the virus. Alright, tapi dia bukan whole virus. This one I nak cerita kat you. This is the basis of COVID-19 punya vaccine sekarang. So, bila dia dah siapkan this uh, spike protein, so antibody you just akan datang dan belajar cara nak lawan this spike. Alright, duri-duri ni. Macam tu lah. Macam mana badan you bina antibody against the real virus Sebab antibody you dah belajar dah cara dia So this mRNA kan yang kita suntik tu Dia takkan boleh masuk DNA untuk tukar ni huh? There's no such thing So you boleh explain to your parents balik ni Macam mana kalau macam diorang um, buka uh, Let's say diorang buka apa whatsapp kan diorang kata Ada terdapatnya microchip yang akan mengubah DNA kita tidak. Dia kata, mak, it's not. Ha, macam tu. So sekarang you boleh explain macam mana it actually function. So macam ni lah. Boleh? Alright. So first you dah belajar name it. Okay. You belajar characteristic. A part of this characteristic you boleh juga belajar. You boleh. You also learn pasal the production of intracellular and extracellular enzyme. Okay. Soalan production of intracellular and extracellular enzyme ni dia selalu couple with dia tanya apa function ribosome. Uh, what is the function of graph endoplasmic reticulum? This all you dah belajar dekat chapter 2. Okay. Next. Okay, sikit lagi. Oh, ni terkejut. Apa? Ada soalan? Apa beza intracellular tu dengan lysosom? Apa beza intracellular dengan lysosom? Okay. Uh, intracellular maksudnya digunakan dalam sel. So, enzyme dalam sel. Alright. Lysosom, dia adalah organel. Alright. So, mungkin penghasilan ni Okay, kalau dia nak guna dekat dalam sel, lysosom asal dia daripada sini juga. So, kita just letak uh, hydrolytic enzyme dalam ni. So, enzyme yang boleh hancurkan. So, the production of lysosom might be like this. Alright, I don't know the production of lysosom. Tapi bila kita cakap pasal lysosom, itu adalah organel. Alright, dia adalah satu part, dia adalah pekerja sel ni. Right, it's cell ni menghasilkan lysosome untuk kerja dengan dia. So dia akan stay dekat dalam. Tapi enzyme ada boleh jadi dua. Dia boleh stay dekat dalam atau stay dekat luar. But enzyme is not organel. Right, enzyme bukan organel. Organel adalah benda yang bekerja for you dalam cell. Enzyme is not one of them. Alright, enzyme is merely selalunya protein. Tapi ada juga benda lain. Enzyme is merely apa yang boleh speed up rate of reaction. Lysosome dia tolong digest kan. Dia tak semestinya diperlukan untuk speed up reaction. Alright, that's the difference. Okay, I hope I understand. Uh, I hope I answer your question. So we'll proceed. Okay, first naming, second characteristic. Next adalah mechanism. Alright? So, mechanism, nak cerita pasal mechanism, okay, cara macam mana enzyme bekerja, I love to talk about lactic. 
lactose intolerant. Alright, you pernah kalau you pergi Starbucks ada orang cakap macam uh, Can I have a soy uh, milk because you know I'm lactose intolerant uh, macam tu So, you macam apa itu lactose intolerant? Lactose adalah sejenis gula, alright, disaccharide, remember? Disaccharide, lactose datang daripada apa? Ya, yeah, lactose Okay, lactose tambah Glucose yes. Glucose tambah Uh, galactose. Alright. So, dalam milk ada lactose. Okay, lactose. Okay. Dalam lactose. Badan you, kalau you belajar, you ingat uh, movement of substance across plasma membrane, lactose adalah terlalu besar untuk masuk. Alright. Even glucose pun kita kata terlalu besar dah. Jadi, bila dia terlalu besar, badan you tak boleh nak guna glucose dalam laktos ni sebab dia tak boleh nak masuk pun sel. Jadi badan kita perlukan cara untuk hancurkan laktos ni. Okay. So kalau you zoom in, alright, laktos ni datang daripada glukos dan galaktos. Jadi you perlu break this bond untuk you dapatkan glukos dengan galaktos. So kalau you nak tunggu breaking of this bond, it's very strong. Alright? So it takes time. Tengok, kucing menguap. Alright? Nak tunggu berapa lama nak break bond ni. Contoh dia adalah you ambil uh, kertas. Eh, kelas kita. Oh, okay, sampai sebelas. Alright? You ambil kertas, you cuba tarik. Alright? Cuba tarik kertas tu. Macam tu. So it's very strong. Dia takkan terpotong. Tapi kalau you ambil kertas tu, you rendam dalam air, lepas tu cuba tarik. Senang je kan? Eh kat situ. Sebab kat sini dia dah bonds dia tu, energy yang diperlukan untuk tarik is no longer high. High. Alright, awal-awal energy yang you perlu untuk tarik ni adalah tinggi. Jadi bila you letak dekat air, you soften this bond, energy you yang diperlukan adalah low. Itulah come with the enzyme. It's low the energy needed. Alright. So glucose and galactose dua-dua ni apa dia membuat disaccharides apa nama dia? Lactose. Lactose. Jadi enzyme dia adalah? Lactase. Yes bijak. Alright. So nama enzyme adalah lactase. So enzyme ni alright you bayangkan dia daripada polypeptide tadi dia akan lipat-lipat-lipat sampailah ada bentuk kat sini. Alright. Active site dia ni muat untuk glucose and galactose. Uh, this is how we fold, 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 fold macam tu. Alright. So this one, glucose and galactose ni kita panggil substrate. Okay. So uh, ni lactase dia mempercepat speed up reaction. So bila substrate, bila dah masuk enzyme, kita akan break this bond jadi glucose and galactose. That's how it works. So, now glucose and galactose kita panggil dia products. Alright, tadi substrate dan sekarang ni kita panggil product. So, this formation enzyme dengan substrate ni, bila dia form this one, bila dia form this uh, structure, we call it Enzyme substrate complex. Okay. Enzyme substrate complex. Tapi sekarang ni enzyme dia nama apa? Lactase. Substrate dia adalah lactose. So kalau dia tanya what is the structure, what is the uh, apa tu the name of this structure, you cakap it is lactase lactose complex. Right? Kalau ini adalah maltase dan maltose, maltase, maltose complex. Alright? And the action of enzyme work can be explained using log and key hypothesis. Alright? Sama juga, okay? You ingat kan tadi one of the characteristic of enzyme adalah dia ada active site. Okay, the specific. I cakap the very specific. Kenapa the very specific? Sebab dia ada active site. So this, okay, kawasan ni adalah enzyme punya active site. So kalau you ambil this one, 
ha? dia tak muat dengan benda lain. Alright? This side ni, dia muat dekat sini saja. So, enzyme ada active site yang buat dia very specific. Okay. Kalau soalan tunjukkan you enzyme substrate complex ni, lepas tu dia kata what is the characteristic of enzyme that can explain this picture, inilah. It is very specific. Okay. So, apa maksud by log and key hypothesis? Alright, you nampak ni. So, key ni tak muat nak masuk kat sini. Sebab enzyme, alamak. Okay. Sebab dia perlu a real substrate sahaja, alright, yang fit kat dalam log. So, enzyme kita cakap as log, substrate as key. Alright, so log ni ada active site yang betul-betul specific kepada uh, certain uh, log sahaja. That's what you mean by log and key hypothesis. Alright, this one gambar ada dalam buku teks you. You nampak? Yang ni tak muat sebab active site dia tak specific. Substrate ni sahaja yang muat. Okay, dan kita guna this uh, apa nama dia, this arrow to say that the reaction is reversible. Okay. Substrate combined with enzyme to form enzyme substrate complex. Alright. This one is the enzyme substrate complex. Sekarang ni sebab kita tak tahu ni enzyme apa ni substrate apa. So kita guna enzyme substrate complex. Kalau kita tahu enzyme apa, namakan dia. Alright. Akhir sekali dapat products. Okay. Ini adalah log and key hypothesis. So if the question asks you explain on log and key hypothesis, cakaplah enzyme act as a log, ada active site, perfectly form enzyme substrate complex and produce products. Right, next. Okay, inilah yang dimaksudkan dengan energy needed. Alright, activation energy, alright. Activation energy without enzyme. So, in order for something to occur, alright, some one biochemical reaction to occur, the energy needed untuk successfully break this, ataupun successfully create this, alright, okay, break lah. When we talk about activation energy, is breaking, alright. The energy needed untuk break this, kita panggil activation energy. Alright? Energy needed to activate the breaking of this. Tenaga yang diperlukan untuk aktifkan this breaking. Alright? So, macam ni lah tadi. Uh, macam analogi tadi. So, kalau lah you tak rendam kertas tu dalam air, so activation energy yang you perlu untuk break adalah tinggi. Tapi kalau you rendam dalam air the bond dah jadi lemah so energy needed rendah. That's how enzyme work as a catalyst. Dia tolong rendahkan the energy needed untuk break. Alright? So you will see how this come into question later and this one you will learn more dalam chemistry. Okay, you just tahu, you kena tahu je, alright? Yang mana satu adalah activation energy when enzyme is used sama ada X ataupun Y. So, jawapan dia X, alright? The low energy. Okay, so you covered naming, you covered characteristic, you covered mechanism. So, dalam mechanism, ada log and key. Last kali, dia ada juga talk about activation energy. So okay, if this like too much to you, we will, you will revisit with Cikgu Daliza later. Alright, in your next class. Okay, that's adalah, bila you dah belajar semua benda ni, oh rasa macam otak tepu gila kan? So okay, sikit je lagi. Alright, I'm not gonna, I, I'll finish in like 10 minutes. Apakah factors yang influence the activity of this enzyme? Alright, this one is very important. Sebenarnya, I don't want to rush. But, I hope you ada a sense of idea sebelum you belajar uh, next. 
right? So factors yang affect satu adalah temperature. Okay, so you akan buat eksperimen tadi betul ke ni? So sebab enzyme adalah protein, protein ni bila dia uh, fold macam tu, it is very fragile with temperature. Bila temperature tinggi, above 37 degree Celsius, okay, dekat tiga ni, kita cakap dia dah denature. Alright, dia dah tak ada, dia dah macam break this bond, jadi dia dah tak ada active site. So, enzyme ni kita cakap dia dah denature. Sebab tu, okay, most of the enzyme, 37 degree Celsius ni adalah you punya uh, suhu badan kan. Sebab tu, kalau lah you demam, kan tinggi suhu badan you lebih daripada 37 your mom or your doctors akan try untuk turunkan uh, suhu badan you because kalau lah enzyme dalam badan you dah denatured sebab suhu tinggi okay sebab tu lah yang boleh jadi sawan ada orang yang demam panas sangat sampai meninggal ada orang yang terencat sebab kan ni lah alright sebab kita memang kena jaga the structure of enzyme dalam badan kita. What happened dekat one, okay, bila temperature tinggi, bila temperature tinggi, you ada substrate dekat sini, okay, you ada substrate dekat sini, you ada enzyme dekat sini, alright, let's say you ada banyak-banyak substrate. So, bila temperature tinggi, semua ni akan start untuk gain kinetic energy. Alright, dia akan start bergerak-gerak kan? So, bila bergerak, the frequency dia bergerak dan berlaga dengan enzyme, alright, frequency of effective collision, right, nombor satu, frequency of effective collision. Maksudnya, perlagaan dia Dengan enzyme yang akan membuatkan enzyme ni fit kat sini dan break adalah lebih tinggi. Sebab tu satu, as it grows in temperature, alright, as the temperature rise, okay, enzyme dengan substrate akan gain kinetic energy. Okay, lepas tu frequency of effective collision akan jadi high. Sampailah dia reach optimum temperature. Lebih daripada 37 degrees, this one will denature. Alright, break. The active side no longer complementary. Okay, this one I know is very important. Two mouthful and I'm just covering like two minutes. It's okay, You kita akan cover again like later. Alright, pH. Some enzyme work pH rendah some enzyme work pH tinggi. Alright? Kenapa? It has to do with the proton dekat pH yang akan effect this active site. Ah, uh, You know what? This is like too many now. I'll just um, finish a bit macam ni but no worries kita akan cover balik later. Alright? Next adalah enzyme concentration and substrate concentration. So, dalam satu bekas, okay, you ada enzyme, you masukkan, you ada tiga enzyme, alright, tiga enzyme, you masukkan sepuluh substrate. So, you kira, alright, kalau ini substrate adalah maltose, you kira the amount of glucose yang akan keluar kat sini. So, dalam lima minit, berapa banyak glucose yang akan keluar. Tapi you ada tiga enzyme sahaja. So, tak kisahlah you masukkan berpuluh-puluh maltose pun the amount of glucose, alright, you nampak ini enzyme concentration. Lagi, uh, sekarang ni you ada tiga sahaja enzyme. Okay, so kalau you masukkan banyak-banyak substrate pun dia just ada tiga enzyme sahaja yang bekerja. Jadi, walaupun you increasekan substrate concentration, alright, tambah lagi banyak maltose tapi rate of reaction alright, kalau rate of reaction ni you kira dengan berapa banyak glukos yang dikeluarkan dalam masa satu minit. 
Alright, akan jadi limited. So, this level, nombor dua ni, alright, kenapa dia plateau, alright, dia stagnant kat sini sebab kita cakap enzyme, the number of enzyme jadi limiting factor. Limiting factor. Tapi, kalau kita cakap pasal enzyme concentration, okay, let's say you letak banyak-banyak enzyme, Masuk dah. Masuk 10 enzyme dalam ni. Tapi glukos you ada 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Glukos you ada sikit sahaja. So walaupun you letak banyak enzyme, the number of glukos yang keluar at one level dia akan jadi static juga. So this one kita cakap walaupun enzyme tinggi So, bagi banyak enzim, lagi banyak produk, lagi banyak produk, lagi banyak produk, lagi banyak produk, sampailah maksimum. So, kat sini kita cakap substrate adalah limiting factor. Okay? Alright, okay. This one is a bit technical. Kita akan recall balik later. Alright? So, Uh, may I rasa application ni please read on your own. It's very simple but we 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 we'll cover in the next class. So I'm just kat sini eh. So first dalam chapter ni okay. In this chapter you learn pasal metabolism and enzyme. Okay ni dah nak habis dah ni. So this um This kalau lah daripada tadi you tak dengar you macam oh panjang sangat ni. Okay, now you have to listen. Okay, this chapter you belajar metabolism and enzyme. First kali metabolism you study pasal apa? Apa dua jenis metabolism? Anabolism, catabolism. Yes, anabolism dengan catabolism. Yang mana satu release energy? Catabolism. Yes, catabolism release energy. Anabolism requires energy. Then you belajar naming. So the naming of enzyme harus ikut substrate. Okay, kalau substrate dia maltose, enzyme nama? Maltase. Maltase. Yeah, be judge merlang. Alright. Then you learn about characteristic. Alright. So kalau ingat characteristic yang arman. So, apa first characteristic? One and only. More quantities. Yeah, one and only. Right, second? Very specific. Very specific. specific. Tiga? Speed up by, Speed up by chemical reaction. Speed up. Empat? Help by cofactors. Yeah, bijak. Cofactors. Lima? Reversible jantung you. Okay, nombor enam. Inhibitor. Yeah. Inhibitor. We'll be slow down present of inhibitor. Ni adalah karakteristik. Dan dalam karakteristik juga you belajar production of enzyme. Right? Production of enzyme, intracellular and extracellular. Okay, apa beza transport vesikel dengan Secretary vesicle. Unmodified protein and modified protein. Yes, bijak. Unmodified dengan modified. Then you learn about mechanism. Dalam mechanism, dia you akan jumpa term lock and key. Hypothesis. Alright. So yang mana satu, uh, enzyme mana satu substrate, lock adalah Enzyme. Yeah, enzyme. So key adalah substrate. Dalam log and key hypothesis ni, one term yang you need to always remember adalah enzyme substrate complex. Alright. Okay, then factors. Okay, I tahu I laju tadi factors tapi apa factors yang you ingat? Temperature. Temperature. Lebih daripada 37 degrees akan jadi? Denature. Denature. Alright. Lepas, lepas temperature? pH. pH. Then next? 
Enzyme concentration. Enzyme concentration. Then substrate concentration. concentration. Oh my god, right. Banyak kan orang kita cover dan satu jam sahaja semua benda ni. Right, application last lah. Eh. Last, 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 last. So bila cakap pasal application, so you nampak eh. So nampak tak uh, susu yang ada lactose ni tadi. Jadi orang-orang yang tak boleh nak digestkan lactose ni, bila dia minum, badan dia dia macam, oh tak boleh kita tak boleh nak gunakan lactose ni. Alright, jadi dia akan pas keluar je dekat dia punya large intestine. So dia akan kena diarrhea. Alright, dia akan sakit perut. Jadi apa cara dia? Kita gunakan enzim, kita masukkan enzim dalam bits. Alright, bits. Ni kita panggil kita immobilisekan enzim tu. So dalam ni adalah enzim lactase. Okay, dalam ni adalah enzim lactase. So you pass through susu dekat atas ni. So enzim ni akan digest susu ni. Alright, enzim ni akan digest lactase dalam susu so keluar dalam tu adalah susu yang ada susu uh, lactose dia akan digest jadi glucose lactose yeah, lactose that's how kita buat lactose free milk maksudnya dalam ni dah tak ada tak ada lactose anymore dia ada glucose and galactose so you boleh terus minum sahaja badan you sell you terus guna macam wah wow, tak payah kita nak digest okey Next, digestive enzyme are used in medical sector. Alright, this one you akan belajar chapter untuk digestive enzyme, you akan belajar chapter nutrition. You akan jumpa pepsin, renin, semua tu. So, kalau badan you tak boleh nak buat sendiri, badan you tak boleh nak buat amylis ke, for some reason ileo you, um, tak boleh nak keluarkan enzyme amylase. Uh, so, you kena makan ubat. So, dalam ni ada enzyme. Okay. Protease, alright, protein. They separate the fish skin Sebab dekat fish skin ni Yang connect skin Dengan dia punya daging Ada protein So kita guna protease Untuk separatekan dia okay. Pectinase and cellulase enzyme Are used in juice production Sebab you nak hancurkan Cellulose layer Dekat dekat buah ni. Alright, you guna enzyme cellulase. Dekat, uh, you ingat tak kalau you like, okay, this is one chapter form 5. Kalau ground tissue, dia ada pectin. Alright, so kita guna pectin ni. Sebab you nak hasilkan jus yang tak ada pectin dan tak ada cellulose. Sebab badan you tak boleh nak guna ni. Badan kita tak ada pectin ni and cellulase. Badan you. Okay, sebab tu kita boleh makan rumput. Right. Amylase, lipase, protease and cellulase Kita guna dekat detergent So kalau detergent you ada tulis macam uh, Sebab tu ada detergent Okay yang you jual yang Jual-jual uh, yang murah-murah tu Sebab dalam tu kurang enzim ni Jadi you tak boleh nak digest Kalau you kena sorry eh Kalau lah ni uh, apa nama dia you punya, oh, apa nama dia? Baju, okay. You makan kari, kari-kari yang berminyak tu. So kat sini ada oil stain. Alright, oil stain. So cara you nak hancur ke oil, so you tahu oil adalah lipid. So you perlukan enzyme apa agaknya? Lipis. Yes, enzyme lipis untuk hancurkan lipid. So mana nak dapat enzyme lipis ni? ada dekat dalam detergent you. Alright, dalam uh, dalam detergent bahasa Melayu apa? Basuh baju. Uh, dalam pembasuh baju you. Alright. Ada lipis dalam tu yang you letak kat sini, oh senang je. Sebab dia dah boleh digestkan lipid. So, detergent yang murah tu kurang enzim dalam ni. As compared to detergent yang mahal dalam ni banyak enzim. So, you letak sikit je you dah boleh guna untuk as a detergent. Alright, uh, this trip same to extract fur. So, the ni you boleh baca banyak lagi lah pasal uh, the application of enzyme. Boleh? So, this is what we learn today. Okay, I know it's a lot to take in but how do you feel about this chapter? Is it okay to you guys? Yes. Okay. 
Okeylah kan. So maksudnya uh, jap let me stop recording first.